Hi, my name is Mohit Kalra and I'm from Cambium Networks. Today in this video, I will be talking about the CN Palette E600 Wi-Fi Access Point, which is an indoor, high-powered, gigabit speed product. As part of this video, I will be covering the E600 out-of-the-box components, different parts of this access point, insulation accessories, and how to power on this device. Let's take a look. First, let's begin by looking at what comes as part of this E600 box. This box comes with the quick start guide, the E600 access point itself, the ceiling mounting kit, which includes the one ceiling mounting plate and one ceiling uh, mounting bracket. Also, it comes with four Phillips screws, one rubber foot, and one gigabit POE injector and a power cord. You would require a Phillips screwdriver to complete the installation. This access point is designed as a wall mount or ceiling mount. On the front panel of this device is a multicolor LED light which provides the information about this access point. When this LED is glowing amber in color, it actually signifies that the access point is powering up and initializing. When this LED turns green in color, it actually signifies that the access point is in service and is working in a standalone mode and it is not communicating with our CN Maestro cloud controller. When this LED is glowing blue in color, it actually signifies that the access point is in service and is also communicating with our CN Maestro cloud controller successfully. The reset button is located on the bottom of this particular device, which is uh, available here and can be pressed very quickly to restart the unit or be held down for about 12 seconds to do the factory defaults on this particular access point. You may actually have to remove these bottom view to reach out to this reset button, which can be done very easily by gently sliding these covers up and out like this. The main port is the gigabit ethernet port, which is required to power on this particular device. And for that, you actually have to run the ethernet cable from the gigabit data plus power port from this POA injector going into the port, which is labeled as ETH1 or POE. The other Ethernet cable has to be run from the gigabit data port of the POE injector going into the LAN or the DHCP server. There's one additional Ethernet 2 port which is required to connect additional network devices. There are a few other ports which are available on the bottom of this particular access point. The first is the 12 volt DC power connector which is available on this access point and a USB connector which is available, also a Kensington slot to deter theft. Now that we're familiar with this access point, let's take a look at how it is installed. For this video, we're going to focus on the ceiling mounting. However, this access point can also be installed as a wall mount. Please refer to the quick start guide for additional mounting options. The first step requires you to make a hole in the ceiling tile to allow this ethernet cable to pass through this tile. Next, we will use these four screws to secure the mounting plate and the mounting bracket together to be able to connect with the ceiling tile like this. After that, what is required is to feed the ethernet cable through the hole of this particular ceiling tile going into the data plus power port of this adapter. Furthermore, what is required is to connect the ethernet cable with the ETH1 port of this access point to provide the connectivity. Furthermore, what is actually required is to align these two slots of this access point with these four slots of this mounting bracket to connect it firmly by pushing it down. You will hear a snap when these mounting bracket gets connected properly with this access point. Now you can connect this ceiling tile back to the ceiling to complete the installation. Of course, this can be done using a variety of ceiling materials. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for watching.